All right, then there are product and competitive audits. This is something I think I've mentioned in class before, where basically you're just really going out and you are looking at what already exists. And you are looking at it in depth. All right, this is sometimes called an, an expert review or a heuristic review. All right, so the design team needs to look at any existing products or any existing prototypes that exist. Sometimes they are prototypes your own company or organization might have, or sometimes companies will release prototypes or betas. Look at those very carefully. It also helps you provide a sense of the state of the art. It tells you who your competitors are, and it can also give you questions to ask your users in your interviews. Because there may be some new feature that you find or a feature you didn't think about that you want to see, is this something my users really like or is it just a marketing tool? Because sometimes when we look at marketing, there are these things that sound really, really cool and do we ever use them? No, I, I like calling it the uh, Photoshop effect. Right, everyone wants Photoshop. I just, I'm just sitting at home and all I do is touch up a few pictures, get rid of red eye, but, red eye, but I want Photoshop. Right? You guys have heard of that, right? Of course, they do a fabulous marketing job. So when you are doing a competitive audit or a heuristic review, basically you are the expert. You are using your knowledge. You're going to sit down and you're actually going to carefully analyze that product. You are going to be using it. Right, so it's not like you do a cursory, oh, okay, let me just look at it, I'll flip through the screens. You actually need to try to use the product. That's what makes it an expert review. So it does need to be quite in depth. Now, in addition to understanding what's out there, right, it also familiarizes the design team with what are some of the strengths and weaknesses of what's out there. So it's not this high level idea that we often have of the competition. It's much more in depth. Right? It tells us what can the users actually do. Now here's another thing. It may be that there is a product out there that, that already does something we're thinking about, but you find that users don't use it. It would be very important to know why. Is it that they don't really need it? Or is it that, that you know, it has that capability, but it's too difficult for users to learn? or it's too difficult for users to remember how to do. You know, some of the things we talked about earlier in the semester. Something else to look at. And it also provides a general idea of the current functional scope of the products that are out there. All right. There's some other types of research. There's market demographics and market segments. They have a tendency to use data from various other areas. Focus groups, market surveys. Right, they look at, at customer demographics, they group customer demographics, they look at education level, age, gender, zip code. Actually, zip code is one that's being used more and more these days. And in fact, they're even using addresses in neighborhoods these days, particularly when it comes to local retail, where there are some companies that they will actually track where do people come from in the neighborhood, and when you walk into the mall, they are tracking where you go. Now, maybe anonymous, but they see what store do you go to, do you make a purchase, those sorts of things. It's actually quite sophisticated. So, this can help us really forecast marketplace acceptance of various products and services. It can be really helpful with that. It's good for determining how viable a product is. Is this something that's viable that may actually be something that will succeed in the marketplace? But what it's best at? is for convincing management to build a product. Because when you work for a corporation, the majority of the time is the number one purpose of the corporation to create cool technology. No. That's kind of maybe part of it, right? But especially when you get to management that where the management is not a technology person, they're focusing on the business aspect of it. They love this stuff. You go and you show them market data, you have a much better chance of convincing them that this is a product that needs to be created. I know you don't appreciate it now. Wait till you get into the corporate world. Quite a difference. 
Now, what's the challenge though? Because this still doesn't answer all the questions that we need. Understanding whether someone wants to buy something is not the same as defining what needs need to be met with that product. Those are two different things. There's some overlap, but they are two different things. How a product is marketed is not necessarily going to define everything that product needs to be able to do. Make sense? Yes? 